Five biblical principles your Bible curriculum should include. If you are responsible for putting a Bible program together, you might feel lost in the process or even defer to a prepackaged curriculum. But what makes one curriculum better than another? I'm going to speak specifically to those who are teaching Bible in a classroom context or developing their own Bible program. But these five principles equally apply if you are teaching a Sunday school class, are overseeing a Sunday school program, or are designing a Bible study program. When we are looking for a Bible curriculum, we must start with the Bible itself. God gave us His Word in a very specific way. So it's not just the content that we are looking at. It is actually the manner in which God communicated that content. We are going to look at five principles that reflect the way that God has given us His Word and then use that as an evaluation for the curriculum we choose or develop. Let's get started. First, God revealed His plan for the world in a progressive story of redemption. He did this so that His character would be revealed, so that our character as people would be revealed, and that He would receive the glory and honor that He alone brought salvation to the world. When we are looking for a curriculum, therefore, we are looking for something that follows a chronological story of the Bible and that gives a big picture of God's working through history to bring salvation. Second, God raised up men and women who loved Him and obeyed His ways during the times and culture in which they lived. How can that be reflected in our curriculum? We are going to look for something that utilizes storytelling in a large measure that incorporates the appropriate background and highlights the spiritual condition of the characters as the story unfolds. The Old Testament the New Testament, it's about people. It's about men and women who love and obey God in the evil times in which they are living. God not only tells us to live godly, He shows us what that looks like in our evil world as well. Third, God used the land of Canaan in order to teach Abraham's descendants very specifically God said in Deuteronomy that he was taking them into this particular land to show that they must obey him, they must rely on him for provision, that he would keep his word, and that he will judge the evil and corrupt practices of the nations on the earth. The land belongs to God. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. God's plan takes place in time and space. The Bible is not some Eastern mystic experience of our minds. It's historical reality. Place is important to know. What has God done here? What makes the Holy Land holy is the Holy God who put His residence there in His temple. This is often overlooked in curriculum, but we want something that will include a basic geography of Bible lands at the age-appropriate level that we're teaching. Number four, God rewards those who memorize His Word by keeping them from evil. Both in the law, the poetical books, and prophets, God tells His people to memorize, meditate, think about, remember over and over that His Word should be in the forefront of our minds day and night. The psalmist says, Your Word I have hidden my heart that I might not sin against you. Therefore, in our curriculum, we want age-appropriate memory work that fits with what is being taught and is connected to real-life situations. Number five, God delights to give spiritual insight to those who study His Word in order to do it. Our study and our teaching is not simply a mental exercise in knowledge or becoming scholarly. We come to Scripture with the heart of the psalmist who says, I delight to do your will, O God. Your law is written in my heart. We want a curriculum that shows the relationship of scriptures to real-life situations and encourages spiritual growth. It also includes age-appropriate Bible study tools, allows the students to share what they know and believe with other people. Those are the five principles that should be included or reflected in a strong Bible curriculum. 
Now, let's take a closer look at how those principles would play out at the learner level. This has to do with what I am assessing and how I am assessing the knowledge and skills acquired by the learner. So let's look back at those five principles. Number one, God revealed his plan for the world in a progressive story of redemption. Therefore, when I assess what the students have learned and what they should understand, what am I assessing? First, that they can give me the chronology of the main characters and the progression of the main events. I would include activities or games that make the students put things in order. My quiz and test questions will include putting people and events into their chronological order, or I might assign a project where my student makes a timeline or creates a chronological presentation or keeps a chronological notebook. Number two, we said God raised up men and women who loved him and obeyed his ways during the times and culture in which they lived. How am I going to assess that? My students have acquired that understanding. Well, my students should know the people, the events, and the time period and should be able to demonstrate that knowledge by identifying the notable accomplishments of the characters, by recognizing the timeless truth of the passage, by identifying significant details, and by describing the main events. The easiest way to assess this is through matching, fill-in-the-blank, and true-and-false questions, either through quizzes or tests or just games even that have this type of format. Number three, we said God used the land of Canaan in order to teach Abraham's descendants. Therefore, my students should understand the location in which the events took place. How do I assess that? Can they locate the cities, territories, and countries relevant to that time? Can they explain the relevance of the geography to an event? I could have the classroom set up like an interactive map of the Holy Land where points in the room represent key areas and cities. On my quizzes and tests, I would definitely want to include a map for recall of key locations. Maybe a matching game or a quiz would be an effective way to reinforce what events happened at key locations. Number four, we said that God rewards those who memorize his words by keeping them from evil. Therefore, the student should demonstrate Bible memory by establishing a consistent pattern of memorization, by recalling memorized verses after a period of time, by accurately recalling the references with the content, and by being able to relate those verses to real-life situations. Now, there are excellent resources available to use memory games, different methods to teach a Bible verse. The real challenge is how do we implement periodic review and how do we assess recall after a period of time? I personally have used the MIMLOC program. It utilizes a picture on the front of the card, a Bible verse on the back, that recalls the first word or phrase of that Bible verse. I have my students keep a log of the daily review and then they quote their verse to a designated person. Then each week, they randomly draw from a box that has the picture side of the verses that we've memorized up to that point, and they have to write whichever verse they've selected out of the box. Because it's randomized, they have to continue to know all the verses over the complete semester. Number five, we said God delights to give spiritual insight to those who study his word in order to do it. Therefore, my students should study and apply the Bible principles by identifying areas of personal character growth, sharing the truth of Scripture with someone else, using study tools to find relevant information, and applying the content to real-life situations. How do I assess that? One easy way is to have my students fill out application questions during the week and have that turned in as homework, or they could keep their reflections and interactions in a journal as a unit or a semester project. 
The method of a lesson might include looking things up in a Bible dictionary or Bible atlas to practice Bible study skills. As you evaluate your Bible curriculum for your setting or as you develop your own Bible curriculum, these five principles can guide you in reflecting the manner in which God gave us His Word. Many blessings as you put your Bible program together and teach God's Word.